Hey guys, Frank Cox here. On today's video, I'm gonna show you how to build a trailer for your smoker, so stay tuned. So let me identify a couple of structural components that we're gonna be using. The first thing is, as you'll notice here, this is what's called four inch channel, and it's a 3 16 web on the channel or the height or the the cord or whatever you want to call it. That's this vertical piece right here. It's 3 16 of an inch thick and it's four inches tall. That's a pretty good structural piece of material to use. Alternatively, you can use a piece of uh, two inch by four inch rectangle tubing or something like that for a build like this. Now let's get into like the weight capacity rating. The first thing you're going to notice is that I'm calling these things out by so many pounds. 3,500 pound, 6,000 pound, 7,000 pound, 12,000 pound. You'll hear that number thrown around a lot. The first thing to remember is, is that's not the weight of the trailer. That's what the capacity of the trailer is. So that capacity comes not just from the structural, like the build out of the material, but it's also the weight rating of the axle. So we're gonna get into showing you some axle stuff here in a little bit. For the sake of uh, talking about the frame here, we're gonna frame this out to where I can make two axles hang, which is a tandem axle, and it's gonna have a capacity of 70 or 7,000 pounds, maybe closer to 7,200, but it's really two 3,500 pound axles is what that is. That means that each axle has a capacity of 3,500, and we're gonna add those two axles together for 7,000 pounds. You've seen those trailers before, tandem just means two axles. So anyway, let's get into how I laid this out. So the first thing to remember is you got to have a level working surface. And I'll just be the first guy to tell you, I've been working on concrete floors, trying to do things that have to be level for 20 something, 30 years, whatever it is, as long as I've been building things. And there is not a single concrete floor in the world that's perfect. You're always going to have a bump, a dip, a sag, or it's on purpose sloped. In this case, this is a shop floor and there's a door down there. So everything slopes towards that door in the event that rain comes in or something like that, it's easy for that water to drain out of here because there's no floor drains. So what we have to do then is we have to create a level environment, okay? So the first, the easiest way to do that is to grab some jack stands. So these are actually homemade pipe stands and my buddy Bob Moffat over from uh, Let's Weld Something, uh, Ram Nation 58. So they've got a V in them like that. And that's because we're working with pipe. We're usually holding up a stick of pipe that's gonna be rolling around and stuff and we wanna hold it from rolling. In this case, I need a flat surface. So I took a piece of four inch by four inch steel plate and I just laid it inside of each one of these and I leveled that piece of plate inside that stand and I just put a quick tack right there just to hold that plate so it doesn't scoot or move or tilt. Okay, so I've got four jack stands that all four on each corner are leveled up, okay? Now, I've got a tool over here. There's, there's three things you're gonna need for this. The first one is something like this right here, which this is called a cross laser level. Every pit building shop needs one of these because it's, a, it's literally a cheat code for your shop floor. This thing right here, just this box on top is about anywhere from 40 to like 70 bucks, depending on the, the, which one you get. I got this one from Harbor Freight. It's a, it's a Bauer is what it is. And this is the $39 one. Um, but you'll see in the, in the front of it here, it's got like a cross in there and there's a glass lens. You can turn this thing on and you'll see it start to beep in there. Now what's happening is it's, it's actually loading up a, uh, a laser beam in there and there's a floating head that floats around in there and it self levels itself wherever you put it. So you can set it literally on the floor anywhere and you can turn this thing on. There's a slide button on the side that releases that head when, it, when you're uh, using it and it locks it when you're in, in position. So if you literally just slide that up, this, lo this laser will load up and you'll see a green light on top. And then that thing will start to level itself out. Now what's happening is, is everywhere that way on the wall, I can see it on the wall right there. See it on the wall back there at the very back of the building. I can see it over here. It's shining a flat laser line everywhere in here. And so what you can literally do with this is you can take a tape measure and you can find a spot in the room and you can just set that like this right on top of that piece of steel and you can look and see a measurement. You can't see it from there, 
but this thing here is exactly 11 and three quarters of an inch. So it depends on where you set this at. On a, it's got just a little old cheap tripod that holds a phone on it, you know, this one here. And I just set it in the floor somewhere where it's gonna shine the entire landscape of what I'm doing. And then I can just run around. I can laser here. I can come over to this corner and hit it and see that laser. I can do it on all four corners if it's in the right spot. What that's gonna do is it's gonna help me get all four of these jack stands tuned exactly the same height. Now my trailer's not gonna be twisted. It's not gonna have rickrack in it. And when I hang my axle, everything's gonna be tuned and flat. So it's not gonna get a hop in it. That's what's really important about building a trailer is you wanna make sure that you don't have things twisted and, and out of kelter and stuff with each other so that you don't develop a hop or wear tires or even have problems with structure on the trailer um, from vibration. So anyway, another way you could level all of this is with just a regular old torpedo level. There's a six foot level behind the camera there. You can use any kind of a level you want, even a string line with a level on it. This one here just happens to be really affordable. You can actually find a link in the description to, to buy something like this, whether it be the Bauer brand or another brand. But uh, anyway, that's my recommendation. You can use levels and stuff like that. Now we're gonna talk about how to square this thing up. Okay, so to get started, well, the first thing we did is we've got these jack stands in here. We put our material on it. We've got the material level this piece is exactly the same height and level with that piece. So they're tuned together. The next thing we got to do is make sure that they're tuned like this with each other and like this with each other. If this piece is two inches farther that way than this one, then our trailer is going to have a twist in it and nothing's going to be square. Or if we have these things on an angle with each other, they're not perfectly parallel, we're gonna have a similar situation. We're gonna, it's gonna be really hard to square things up on the trailer. You're gonna to have to mess with your trailer springs and stuff like that. So I start off real simple. I try to use the, the environment as much as I can to help me cheat. One thing I did when I was setting these jack stands in place, I set the center of the jack stand off of the wall because I know that wall is, is a straight line. At least I assume it is if the guy did a good job building the building that line, that wall is a straight line. So I just bump off of that wall and then I look and I find a point on this jack stand that's very similar to that jack stand and I get the centers of those stands level, you know, straight with each other. Then I put my channel on, then I level everything. Now I'm going to come right back and bump off of that wall again and if you've got a tin wall like this that's got dips in it, you just have to basically find the same spot in each place you check. So I went ahead and set this one here. I know from the wall to the inside of this is 71 inches. I just come down here and I do the same thing. Just hit that wall, hit 71 inches. Now, I literally could clamp this beam to this jack stand and mark the floor and it would be in the same spot every single time. You could even, if you want, put two tacks on that sacrificial plate and your, crop, and your main runner and that thing won't move. It'll be there every time, as long as you keep it within the marks on the floor. You can use gaff tape or chalk or a paint marker or spray paint or whatever you want just to paint that spot, right? Okay, now we need to know the next thing. We need to know what our spring centers are. Now, when you buy a trailer, uh, trailer parts, like you buy an axle or whatever, it's gonna ask you a couple of things. What do you want the weight rating to be? We discussed that. Then it's gonna ask what your spring centers are. So I'm gonna show you an axle here in a second, but what that is is there's a bracket that's welded to the top of the axle tube. That bracket is where your springs mount. It mounts to that spot. And literally from the center of this spring to the center of this spring is where your main runners will go on your trailer. Now, if you're following along, looking at your plans that you got from smokerplans.net, you'll notice that I usually spec out a 48 inch trailer axle. That's my favorite size of axle for a trailer because I want the load on that axle, I want it to be in the center of the trailer. So like right here in the middle. So on a wide trailer like this, I've got more stuff happening on here. So I'm gonna have the tank off to one side on the cook chamber. What's gonna happen is all that load's gonna be sitting on that one spring. So even though we have a 7,000 pound trailer, we've only got really, you know, one side of that trailer, which is about half that capacity holding all the way to that cooker. So we got to do something on the other side 
to keep that weight balanced or our trailer will sag like this. And then you'll wind up flattening or breaking a spring, if that makes sense. So that's why I choose a 48 inch trailer width on your spring centers. So if you want a wider trailer and you're using our plans, the only thing that needs to change is the cross member width, that's it. So if you wanna buy a wider axle, in this case, my spring centers are 74 inches. I'm gonna have wood storage and like a live fire situation on this side of the, on the passenger side of the trailer and my uh, big cooker on the other side. So since I'm doing that, I need more real estate on the trailer. I chose a 74 inch spring center. Also, that's a really, really common uh, spring center size. The other information they're gonna want on that axle is the hub face. Let me talk about how to square this up. So what I'm doing here is I'm doing a thing called the three, four, five method. If you've ever built a house or laid concrete or had to lay out any kind of a big pad or something like that, you've likely heard about the three, four, five method. So really what that amounts to is we're drawing a triangle. It's a right triangle, so it's at 90 degrees. And so we know that if leg one is three foot and leg two is four foot, the hypotenuse or the, the diagonal going across that is gonna be five foot or three inches, four inches, five inches, three foot, four foot, five foot. It could be multiples of that. You could do like 12 and then keep going with the math. 12, let's see, what would that be? Three times four, you know, times five, you just keep going. So anyway, what I like to do first is I'll make a mark on this one here at three foot. I hooked the rear of the cross mem of the main runner, I mean, the rear of the main runner. And I went up and I made a mark at three foot. And I've got this, this is not part of the trailer. This is just a piece that's long enough that I grabbed ahead of schedule to set on there. And I've got, I'm gonna use the inside of this because it's easy for me to see right here where I'm at. And I came from the outside of this main runner and I came over to four foot. I'm gonna double check that just to make sure because I might have moved it. And I did just a little bit. Okay, so we're back on four foot. So now I'm literally just gonna take and touch this. I'm gonna hook this tape measure. The inside, I'm gonna use one side of this tape measure and I've got the end of that tape measure hooked on the four foot spot. And I can literally come down here and I should see 60 inches to the end of that mark Believe it or not, I'm within an eighth of an inch. So all I have to do to get this thing square is move this one out. If this distance is too short, then you just open the angle up. This is too tight right now. So I just literally just move this. Well, if it's an eighth of an inch, I'm just gonna move it like a 16th is really all I'm gonna have to move it. Let me check it again. And it is helpful to have a buddy help you with this so he can hold the tape measure on that end. I just happen to not have anybody to help me. And I mean, it's exact. So now what I can do, this runner is sticking too far back. So I'm gonna need to slide this main runner that way to get it the same distance. So I measure off of this front lip to the inside of that. And I've got two and an eighth. And over here, I've got three and an eighth. So this runner here needs to go that way one inch, right? So let's just say that I went ahead and moved that because I don't have anybody to help me get this circus act all put back together, right? So if I get that put in position, now I can start making cross members and notching them and getting them put in place. So I hope that you found that video helpful. This video's intention is just to help you get your environment set up and learn how to get everything level and straight and uh, keep the twist out of it and stuff like that. In the next video, I'm gonna actually start making some cross members and we're gonna start getting things tacked in place. Always remember, if you do anything after this video before the next one, tack, don't weld, because we can always cut a tack, move it, do things we need to do, and then once we're committed and we like what we have, we can start welding out. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video today. I hope you enjoyed it. Listen, if you don't mind, please like and subscribe this channel. There's also a little bell on the bottom right-hand side of the video. If you click that, you'll get notified every time I place a video up on our channel. My mission in life, I believe, is to help you learn how to weld and fabricate so you can build a smoker. And I believe that if you learn how to weld and fabricate and build a smoker, that you'll have a marketable skill that you can take anywhere with you in life, but also you'll learn to cook some really dang good barbecue and build some really good pits. 
So anyway, if you haven't already, please go check out our website, smokerplans.net. But there's also a whole bunch of free links in the bottom of this website that'll take you to get a free sample of two different kinds of smoker plans, as well as an offer to go in and take some online courses. So I appreciate you. Have a great day, and I hope you build something cool. Keep your smoke thin and blue.